Okay, so there's quite a bit of detail in this bit here. I'll let you read through it and we'll just work through the questions here. So uh, in suitable coordinates, the equation of the circle H is given to you in this form. Find the radius of H and the coordinates of its center D. Now the center of the circle, it, when the circle is given to you in this form, the center is minus a half the x coefficient and minus a half the y coefficient. So that will be, uh, divide this by two and change the sign, and divide this by two and change the sign. Now the center is also known as minus g minus f, because that's useful for the next part when we're asked to find the radius. The radius is found using this formula. So uh, g, f, and c, again, now the center is minus g, so therefore g will be two. So two squared and f, or minus f is minus three, so f is three. But again, you don't really need to worry about that because squaring it should remove any, any problem there. And then minus c, so this is c, so minus minus 19 is plus 19. And when you put that into your calculator, you'll find that the radius of that circle is the four square root of two. Now the point E has coordinates three, two. Find the radius of the circle K. Now because the circles touch externally, we're given that in the question. So therefore the distance between D and E is equal to this radius plus that radius. Now the distance between D and E um, is five root two. So you can just use the distance formula. So the point D is, so find, find the equation of the center of the center of the circle H. That's, that's the point D. So the point D is minus two minus three. E has coordinates three, two. So if you use the distance formula between those two points, as we said earlier, you should find that it's five root two. So DE is five root two. Now, the radius of the circle H is here, four root two. And we have to find the radius of the circle K. So what is the radius of the circle K? So it's just five root two, take away four root two. So the radius of the circle K will be equal to root two. So I hope there was no issues there. Now the next part, show that the distance from C to the line DE is half of DE. So first of all, what's half DE? Well, DE is five root two, so therefore half of that will be five root two divided by two. Now, first of all, we have to find the equation of the line DE. Now the point D is minus two minus three. And again, the point E is three two. So if we find the slope um, between those using y2 minus y1, you'll find that the slope is one. So this is just the simple stuff I'll allow you to do yourself. And then y minus y1, so say y minus minus three equals m times x minus minus two. So that will give you uh, the equation of the line. So minus x plus y uh, plus one equals zero or x minus y minus one equals zero. Now then the distance from the point minus two, two to this line is found by using the perpendicular distance from a point to a line formula. So this is the point, so this is x one, y one, and a is, the, a is the number in front of x, b is the number in front of I, which y, which would be minus one, and c will be minus one. So substituting all of those into the formula, so a is, as we said, one, x1 is minus two, b is minus one, y1 is two, and plus c, so plus minus one, is that. And that's all over the square root of a squared plus b squared, so one squared plus one squared. Um, will be root two. So uh, just doing the top line, so you've got minus two, minus four, so you've got minus five, but of course it's the absolute value, so it's five over root two. 
Now, that's 5 over root 2. We set up here that the distance was supposed to be 5 root 2 over 2. So, this can actually also be written. This, can, this comes a little bit, um, maybe just your understanding of roots. The calculator wouldn't necessarily always give it to you. So, 5 times 1 over root 2. But 1 over root 2 can also be written as root 2 over... Uh, Uh, five or sorry root two over two so which is exactly what we have here so where are we getting that from well just if we look at this just for a second i'll go over here so say you just had the fraction one over root two let's just say you multiplied both top and bottom by root two so it's that's effectively one so i'm not changing that fraction that will give you root two and then root two by root two is two that's how your calculator would give you the answer but so then that's that's it done so this number here is indeed half of uh, the distance from D to E. And if we continue on here now, the next part, the translation. Sorry, there's a little bit of extra space there. Instead of cramming it all in, I could have used that. So the translation which maps the midpoint of DE to the point C maps the circle K to the circle J. Find the equation of the circle J. So to find the equation of any circle, we need the center and we need the radius. It's a translation, so it, the radius should be the same. Um, uh, as the, so the radius of the circle J will be the same as the radius of the circle K. And the radius of the circle K, as we found in the first or an earlier part, is root 2. Now, so what's the center? Well, first of all, the midpoint of DE. So you have the coordinates of D, you have the coordinates of E. So I'll let you work out the midpoint yourself using the midpoint formula. Now, that's the midpoint of DE, and this translation maps the midpoint of DE to the point C. Now, what is the point C? In an earlier part, it's minus 2, 2. So basically, you're subtracting 2.5 from x, and you're adding 2.5 to y. So that's the translation. So what's the center of the circle K? So the center of the circle K is 3, 2. Again, that's from an earlier part. So you add 2 and a half, or sorry, subtract 2 and a half from the x-coordinate, so that'll give you a half. And you add 2 and a half to the y-coordinate, that'll give you 4 and a half, which is 9 over 2, whatever. So therefore, the center of the circle is x minus, so we'll call that h and call that k, you know the center of the circle, so x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals the radius squared, so root 2 squared, which is 2. Now the glass square is of side length l, and <coughs> find the smallest whole number j, so it's the two cogs, h and k, are fully visible through the glass. Okay, so... If you look at this little bit here, there's actually, and the diagram doesn't really kind of show it that well there, um, so I just do it, did it a bigger one. See, there will be this kind of area of overlap here, but we have the points, the, the, these points are given, I'm just going to call this F, similar to the marking scheme. Now, if you're going to fit the square inside it, so again, vastly out of proportion, but, but who cares really, you're going to need to ensure that this that there's an room for an entire radius of its own, then the distance between this and the center of that, which is just we're going to call df, and then another radius, because this could, in theory, roll down to here. So what is this distance here? Well, it's just the change in the x-axis. df is just 5. So your, your length, your length l, will be df plus the radius of... Uh, the radius of the circle h plus the radius of the circle k. And the distance from d to f is just 5. The radius of the circle h is 4 root 2 from an earlier part. And the radius of the circle k is root 2. So when you add all those together, you get 12.07. So what's the smallest whole number l? So 12 wouldn't fit it. So it would be 13. So again, just, just to look at that. You have to fit this distance from D to F 
It's just the change in the x value. You've gone from minus two to three.